Hi, Jess Garrett here and welcome back to Surfing Australia TV. Now the aim of this show is to bring the sport of surfing to life and to showcase what Surfing Australia is all about. On today's show, we're catching up with seven times world champion Lane Beachley, B Dervidge and Dan Ross, plus we've got a whole lot more. But first, Surfing Australia launched a brand new program called Vegemite Surf Groms. Vegemite Surf Groms, ladies and gentlemen. It's an historic day for the surf, the sun, the sand and the sea and surfing. Vegemite Surf Groms is going to run all around Australia. It's a national junior development program for 5 to 12 year olds. It's going to run through our accredited and quality assured surf school system. Um, every iconic beach around Australia, the 65 delivery centres that will be running the program. Uh, it starts on the 8th of October and it's a summer program so it runs all through summer uh, through school holidays and over that Christmas New Year period and uh, right through the Easter school holidays as well. The Australian Government want to do two things with sport. First we want to make sure at the high performance end that we're, we're creating champions for the future, champions who young Australians are going to look up at, up towards and that's where surf groms are so important. We have such a proud history in terms of surfing in this country but also importantly we want to make sure that young Australians get a love of sport, a lifelong love of sport and that's where this program really fits in well. You might have seen this man uh, weave some magic at Chowpu. You might have seen him, I don't know, notch up one or two or three or nine or ten of his world championships. His name is Kelly Slater, the Kelly Slater, and he's taken time out of the New York Pro to share a few thoughts on Vegemite Surf Groms with us here at Bondi today. Hey, it's Kelly Slater here. Just want to say hi to all those kids joining Surf Groms. Stoked to see uh, Quicksilver and the Australian government getting behind surfing the way they are. And, um, because Quicksilver always has been, but to have our, our sport recognized by the government and backed in that way is really nice. And uh, so I'm stoked. Hopefully, hopefully I get out and, and surf with some of you kids and uh, you get a start and have fun. Nice of him. Busy schedule and been doing a, some big wave surfing recently to take the time out. I think the wonderful thing about this initiative with the Surf Groms is, is it will give kids who maybe don't live close to the ocean or don't have a parent who surfs, it will give them the opportunity to get in the water and sort of learn about surfing and enjoy this wonderful sport. And I think the great thing about this program is that I think hopefully at some point down the line we may see a, a male or a female Australian champion or, or a world champion who comes through this program. Veggie Mai, Surf Groms ladies and gentlemen, fantastic. Cruising the coast, powered by Veggie on toast, you've got to love it. It's iconic isn't it? It really is. When Surfing Australia uh, approaches about Vegemite Surf Groms, it just seemed like an opportunity too good to refuse. Um, so they came to us, the program is really professional, really well run, nationwide, qualified instruction, so it just felt like something we couldn't say no to. Vegemite's always been a part of the Australian community and this is a chance for us to get more involved. Where there's water, there's wahoo. Our demographics are such that uh, when we're approached, uh, we grab the opportunity. So uh, we're, we're very excited. Vegemite Surf Groms, how does it fit in with Surfing Australia's sports development program? How important is it? This is all about getting kids out from behind their computer games and their televisions and participating in what is a whole of life program and that's one of the great things about surfing. Mark Richards said, you know, 54, I'm, I'm the same age Mark, um, and I'm still just as stoked taking off on a wave as I was when I was a teenager. Um, the stoke never goes and so we've got a chance to, to start that stoke off on five year olds and they'll have that for the rest of their lives as well. I remember the first time I, I stood on a surfboard when I was actually 10 years old 
Um, it was in Terrigal on a beach break, very similar to this one here in Bondi. Um, it was on a foam board. I mean, that first time I stood up, I, I think I was nearly in tears and screaming and like trying to see if my mother could see that. And it was very personal because no one actually saw it. And uh, I remember coming in going, that's what I want to be. I want to be a surfer for the rest of my life. The value of, you know, just introducing kids at a fun level with the ocean uh, just opens up their learning capacity, lets, lets them feel comfortable with their natural surroundings and engages them in natural surroundings. The value of that is just ongoing and it's priceless. The main thing about our program is that it's fun and uh, it keeps the kids engaged for the whole one and a half hour session they're on the beach or the time period they're there so they're really having a great fun time the, the whole time they're on the beach. There's no other program like this around the world. Uh, for us, Australians love surfing, they love the beach and this is an opportunity to give young Australians aged 5 to 12 surf awareness, teach them about water safety but at the same time get them into surfing so it's a win-win from the government's perspective. This, as Tim has said, is quite groundbreaking to, to bring a whole new aspect to the sport of surfing in Australia is something that is really fantastic and it will be uh, a fantastic legacy as we, as we move through the years and uh, I'm sure in 10 years time when Surf Groms is established as a, as a national institution we'll, we'll forget how hard it was to, to actually get it up and running and it will just be part of Australian culture. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for attending the Vegemite Surf Grom. Hey, nothing wrong with a bit of zinc cream on the nose, sand between the toes, it's a beauty. You don't get a better one when the blue sky comes out of Bondi Beach and you're looking after five to 12 year old kids who've got the biggest grins on their faces. Or did they have the biggest grins on their faces? Did that mantle belong to the sports minister? Mark Arbib said some great words. His passion for Bondi and for surfing was clear. Mark Richards, four times world champion, his grin, his enthusiasm for surfing grew even more today when he got amongst those kids. And Tommy Carroll just said his home is the ocean and he wants more kids to have a home like that and be safe there. Vegemite Surf Groms, it was a cracker. Thank you very, 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 very much indeed. Vegemite on toast, it's powering us while we surf the coast. If you're after more information on the Vegemite Surf Groms program, just jump onto our website, www.surfingaustralia.com. Without a doubt, Australia is the most successful professional surfing nation. We've claimed more surfing world titles than any other country. And with the announcement of a new $2 million surf-specific high performance centre and the strong support of the Australian government, we're determined to stay on top. Construction started today on Surfing Australia's multi-million dollar training facility at Casuarina Beach, with Deputy Prime Minister Treasurer Wayne Swan turning the first soil. The $2 million high performance centre funded by the Federal Government is the world's first dedicated surf training facility, all about the development of elite surfers and coaches. Now Treasurer Swan was joined by surfing world champions Mark Richards, Lane Beachley and Jack Freestone at the turning of the soil. So let's take a look at how the event unfolded. Being here today at the opening of this high performance facility uh, is really a great achievement uh, for Surfing Australia. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, it'd be more pleasure than Parliament. <laughs> <laughs>
The thing about uh, surfing uh, or any elite sport is you just can't rest on your laurels and the great thing about this facility is that it's going to really put a lot of work and training into the next generation of champions and that's really satisfying. What we really wanted to do with this site was to uh, focus on our high performance and our elite training. The next challenge of course was to uh, put the finance together. So with the help of the Australian Government and the Australian Sports Commission, we've been able to realise that vision. And today is the uh, day we really begin construction and we're very much looking forward to the completion of the facility. That'll mean that we have a uh, world first, world's best practice training facility for the sport of surfing. And uh, I have no doubt we're going to produce uh, world champions uh, for many years to come as a result of, of what we're doing here today. Having a, an HPC centre, having a program like this to develop the correct techniques from the start would have been amazingly beneficial. And it is for any athlete to, to learn all the correct techniques from the beginning of their careers. Look, the goals are basically to create world champions on the international stage. It's, uh, it's about identifying talent around the country and bringing them into a facility and a, and a centre that can really provide them with the opportunity to, to go on and become a champion. It's pretty amazing what Surfing Australia is doing now with, um, with the coaching clinics and the camps that they're doing with all the, all the boys and girls and all these up and coming young surfers. And I think the, the type of programs that they're working on will be the things that will give our young up and coming surfers the advantage to do well on, on the, in the Australian events and also do really well on the world stage against the international surfers. I think it's something that we've needed for a long time and it will definitely be an advantage. It's like a starting ground for all the surfers I think. It's a, it's a place where we're learning and uh, we can get coached and stuff like that. So, you know, I think it's a part of a, a stepping stone to, to going on to bigger and greater things. Oh, there's no doubt there'll be a great community benefit here, particularly for the construction industry. We know things in the construction industry are a bit soft, so I think the local construction industry around here would certainly welcome the employment and all the activity that's going to flow from these facilities. We'll be employing about 100 uh, or over 100 people from our Tweed office working on this, uh, on this job. We've got about 200 apprentices at Hutchies. Not all of them will be working on this job, obviously, but we'll get some training in and uh, we're really excited to finally, uh, finally get a start here. It's had a lot of um, really specific uh, architectural elements that have been integrated into the building to allow it to be really, really surf specific. So, and that's the number one point about this building really is that it is really surfing specific. Um, there's plenty of training centres around the world where surfers actually access at the moment. None of them will actually have the level of surfing specific um, you know, elements to the, to the building that this one will and, and that's what the, the main advantage is going to be. Having something to focus on that's positive and healthy and outgoing and understanding all the scientific elements to it are going to give all the Australian athletes that come to this centre a huge advantage over their competitors from around the world. And I think what will happen with the HPC, I think that um, in the future there will be Australian champions, male and female, and also world champions, and I think in their acceptance speeches when they win world titles, I think they'll be reflecting on all the good information they received at the HPC, which you know set them on their way to winning world titles. The whole thing about Australia is that we really perform at the high levels across a whole range of sports and activities, but there's none quite like surfing. There's no doubt that the High Performance Centre will play a big role in developing the next generation of surfing champions. Now the facility will feature a state-of-the-art surf-specific gym, an auditorium, offices, a testing and treatment room and accommodation and has been designed in consultation with the Australian Institute of Sport. Now we're hoping that the doors will be opening next May, so keep tuned because there's exciting times ahead for surfing in Australia. For more info on the High Performance Centre, just go to www.surfingaustralia.com. Seven times world champ Lane Beachley and WCT surfers B Derbage and Dan Ross are giving back to the sport that has given them so much by holding HPC pro surfer camps. Not only do these elite athletes give time to young surfers, they also provide a priceless insight into what it takes to be the best.
think the thing about Lane Beachley camps or MR camps and all the pro surfer camps, I think the great thing about them is that the girls are identified as future champions. They're brought into this environment where they're with like-minded athletes in a very safe, controlled and enthusiastic environment. And they're given the opportunity within these four days to determine whether that's what they want to pursue or not. The main thing I learned from Lane's camp this year was just helping like improve my surfing and lots of fitness stuff and it's just like to become a prof professional surfer would be a dream come true for me. By being here and having this, this intense program, it actually provides them with a really good idea, a fundamental foundation, if you like, of whether this is exactly where they want to go. And I decided at the age of 16 that I wanted to be a world champion surfer. Up until that point, I was still considering all sorts of other endeavours. But had I been thrown into this environment when I was 16 years old, it would have been an enormous opportunity. Lane was inspirational with her positive theory, um, with the I am and I will, instead of just I may or I won't. There's immense amount of satisfaction and pride in it for me because success breeds reflection. And I obviously have a lot of time to reflect on where I've been, where I've come from and what I've achieved. And to this day, I still receive an immense amount of pride when I see girls walking to school with a board under their arm. And I just automatically go back in my mind to reading my report card in year 11 saying, Mr Beachley, please lock Lane's surfboard away. It's not going to amount to anything. She needs to concentrate on getting a better job and improving her school and, and her studies. And you know, she's, she's got the ability, she just needs to apply herself. Deep down, I am just a surfer. And I love imparting my knowledge about surfing to others, especially girls that are young and enthusiastic and, and genuinely love to learn and, and are sponges. So uh, I'm more than willing to impart that knowledge. Lane taught me to be positive about myself and to not doubt my surfing and that there's always next waves. Next wave. Yeah. <laughs> there's no pressure on these girls to then leave this camp and then go and become world champions. But what we're providing them with the skills, the knowledge, the education, the mindset and of course the resources that this centre offers them with a platform of support. And if they don't do it, they don't. But if they do, then they know that we're all behind them and pushing them and supporting them all the way. Yeah, this is my first HPC camp and it's unreal. Like, I reckon it's great for Australian surfing to have these camps. Every other country's catching up really quick. It's always been Australia to have the majority of guys on tour and slowly it's kind of wiggling down lately. But with these camps and the whole centre, we're going to have the best coaches, the best everything on offer to, for the next generation of kids to come through to, to be the next world champs. So I reckon it's definitely a positive and, and it's great. Start to pay attention. My only mission is to make reality out of my vision. I don't expect you to see what I see. Cause to me it's half full, but to you it's half empty. I remember when I was around 12, all I did was think about surfing and I'd love it if one of my heroes came in and talked to me. So I'm sure they'll go away from it knowing a lot more and just really excited about trying to achieve their dreams and it's great giving back and I'm yeah more than happy to come down and go for a surf and give them a few little tips and yeah just kind of be their friend for the day I guess. These camps at the HPC are 
extremely important for the, the sport of surfing and for the juniors here in Australia because it's it's where it all stems from. It's it's what they learn here and take into their surfing and into their lives that that's going to be the makeup of, of what they're about. You know, whether it's a professional surfer or just the the person themselves, it's extremely important. Oh, Dan Ross, you know he shreds. He's he's such a good surfer. He's fit. He's he knows what he's talking about. He's just he's really concentrated and focused on his surfing. And well, this camp is like it's really good for your skills in surfing, and it's like. It's just, it just helps you improve on everything that you're not picking up on surfing, like what you're not seeing. And just to have them saying and like showing you what you're doing wrong is really great. For the, the kids here in Australia, it's such an awesome opportunity for them to have availability to a centre like this one, the HPC. It's so important to be able to have you know, access to, to not only the, the, the centre here, but to also have crew involved that are, that are at the top of their game and at the top of their sport because that's what they relate to, that's where they want to head and that's, and that's their goal. So for them to be able to connect with, with the, the guys and girls that are at that level, it's, um, it's super important. Well, the HPC is really important for kids like myself because it just really helps us with our techniques and. The reason that we come here is like we get great influence from like Steph Gilmore or Lane Beachley or Dan Ross and it helps Australia have like a great surfing reputation. Uh, it's been a really good experience and I just am really glad to be here and it's just been a really awesome thing to do. I find it really rewarding to be able to, to interact with the kids and to get an insight as to how much they love surfing and to see what they want to get out of it because for me, it's just given me so much, you know, close to everything that I've got has really stemmed from surfing. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aussies are an active nation. We love getting out and about and making the most of our beautiful weather, but the Aussie sun is harsh and Surfing Australia and Suncorp recognise this. So they've created the Suncorp Sunwise initiative. In 2010, Suncorp and its Skin Cancer Sunwise initiative partnered with Surfing Australia to promote sun safety at various Surfing Australia sponsored events. The Suncorp Skin Cancer Sunwise initiative is an integrated program of partnerships and grassroots activities with a long-term strategy to help educate the community about the dangers of sun exposure. The main aim for Sunwise initiatives is to help change the public's behaviour in our harsh Australian sun through its prevention programs and also in providing support to present and future research into skin cancer. Suncorp and Surfing Australia were proud to support two of the biggest events in professional surfing worldwide in 2011, the Quicksilver Pro and the Roxy Pro at Snapper Rocks on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. From the 26th of February through to the 9th of March, Suncorp and Surfing Australia were on hand at the Quicksilver and Roxy Pros to make sure spectators were protected from the Queensland sun so they could enjoy the best surfing by the world's elite surfers. Visitors to the Suncorp Activation Space also had the opportunity to win a weekend surf camp at Surfing Australia's HPC a DHD Mick Fanning surfboard and a year's supply of sunscreen just by completing an iPad survey. Suncorp, proud to be supporting Surfing Australia and the Quicksilver Pro. If you'd like to know more about how Suncorp helps Australians stay sun safe, just go to surfingaustralia.com or suncorpsunwise.com.au. Surfing Australia and Coastal Watch have joined forces to create Camp Coastal Watch, a free three-day surf camp designed for surfers who are trying to achieve competition success.
Camp Coastal Watch is fully funded by Coastal Watch and basically they're sponsoring 16 kids to three camps in 2011. We had over 300 applications for Camp Coastal Watch in 2011 and we ran three camps. There were 16 kids selected for each of the camps. Each of them were funded by Coastal Watch for their accommodation, their food and also the three day coaching program. Basically the kids go online and fill out an application form and what we're trying to get is kids that are motivated to, uh, to get competition results in the future but haven't had the competition results in the past. So we're looking for a kid that hasn't made a quarter final or better at a national level competition at the same time is looking to get into that quarter final so they come here with the motivation to, uh, to, to learn the skills necessary. In the, in the September Camp Coastal Watch, the third Camp Coastal Watch, Joshua Fuller came in and it was great for the kids to do work with Josh because he actually gets a lot of exposure on Coastal Watch for his uh, charging big waves. My name's Josh Fuller, I'm 31 and I'm from Cabarita. I, I just love surfing, so to, to teach people to surf better and see them improve is it's an infectious high, you know, you, you see them really stoked and, and you get stoked at, about it too and, and I'm still learning too, you know, I'm still passionate about improving my own surfing, so I, as well as helping other people, it's, it's helping me become a better surfer too, which is um, pretty cool to call that a job. I use Coastal Watch five times a day, um, not just to see what the conditions are doing, but it's that immediate access to what's happening now, which, which is you know the age we're in, and uh, that's why surfing as well is, is moving forward so fast, is because we don't have to wait weeks for the or months or years for the new surf video to come out. They're out every afternoon on the web. There it is. I usually surf in the mornings before school, so I don't really check it. Then I just go out whatever it's like. But um, when I get home from school, I just like to check Coast Watch to, to see how good the waves are, just because it shows you exactly what they're like. The best thing for me on the Coast Watch camp was looking after the grommets and having lots of fun and surfing real hard because the waves have been pumping. It's heaps fun because all the boys are real nice to me and the coaches are nice and it's helped my surfing heat. The funnest thing about it is probably um, meeting new people and um, probably meeting new surfers that you're going to surf against in a lot of other comps that we go to. I've just got into my surfing in the last like two years and this is possibly the best thing I've done for my surfing, definitely. It's ridiculous, I've never been a part of it, like something like this before, it's wicked. Whether I'm either down the beach or, or in the coaching room, I've, I find that most of the kids pick it up really quick and you know, the kids and adults, their, their learning abilities are a little bit different so um, when we work with them, I, I try, and, try and give it to them at a level that they'll understand easily and you can see it click, you see in their face and kind of like, oh, okay, I get it. I would have thought it would have just been a basic camp about surfing, but it's far better than what I expected. I thought we were just going surfing, but um, we actually do full analysation of every single wave we caught and a lot of other techniques and methods that we should be using whilst we're surfing. Another great thing is things like today, we're up at base today and the kids get to come in and meet Darren, uh, get their hands on a bunch of the, um, the glass boards already, not the, not the, uh, not the blank foam, um, but they get, to, they get to quiz Darren, he uses mind, ask him questions and so they're down there right now talking about, uh, talking about boards, talking about shaper, surfer relationships and basically um, broadening their knowledge on that whole uh, surfing Bubble. Education on surfboards is so important uh, and that's why I, I explain to these kids you can listen to me and, t and try to take it all in but you know you go and look at the websites and learn about surfboards and that's what Mick did and that's what Steph did and some of them didn't do it, some of them didn't want to learn about it. And Kelly, Kelly Slater is a perfect example of someone that experiments. So these kids can learn, understand and then when they go to their shaper they can actually articulate what they want in to do their surfing because as a shaper I can't do these nose pickers and flip flops and whatever they do so I've got to listen to, to Mick and that and that's how I'm developing boards and what's this next generation of kids going to be like? You know it's going to be amazing the stuff that they're doing because the videos they're watching 
uh, they, they're going to go the next level again. So it's important for me to listen to the kids and them to get the understanding so I can make them the best boards for the future. There's definitely personal satisfaction in, in, um, in seeing some or helping someone achieve something that brings them enjoyment or a, uh, you know, a goal or whatever. It's, there's definitely some personal satisfaction there. Well guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you're after any more info, just jump onto our website, www.surfingaustralia.com and we'll see you next time for more Surfing Australia TV. See ya.